Introduction to Group Theory The audience that I have in mind for this short presentation are not the students who are pursuing a degree in mathematics, applied mathematics, or Bachelor of Science in Education major in math. The audience that I have in mind for my presentation are the students who are studying mathematics in the modern world as part of their general education program in higher education. So my video presentation is for the general population of students who are studying in universities. So group theory is the first topic a student will meet when he enrolls in a subject or in a course, which we call in math as abstract algebra. And I will describe to you what's taking place in abstract algebra through an analogy. And I will use flowers. You know, in biology, we study plants. We study flowering plants. These two plants are plants of different species. This one is gumamella, or what we call in biology as hibiscus rosa sinensis. This one is our Sampaguita, and I think this is what they call uh, Jasminum, Jasminum Sambac. So these are flowers from two different plant species, and yet, and yet basically flowers have the same, flowers have the same structure. They have organs for the male gametes, and they have organs for the female gametes, they are protected by a sepal, and they have these bright petals to attract pollinators. So basically, even though Sampaguita and Gumamela flowers are different flowers, basically they share the same structure. Something like that is being studied in abstract algebra, but of course, we are studying here sets. Sets, different sets, and the operations that take place within those sets. And you know what? Sometimes it can happen that even though two sets are different, and the operations that take place within those sets are different, sometimes it can happen that both sets will reveal the same structure. And so abstract algebra is concerned with those similar structures, structures that are revealed by different sets, and which is why many books in abstract algebra will adorn their uh, front cover by this, an art that shows similar similarity in structure and design. So what is a group? The word group is there in your English dictionary, but it's not just a set of elements. A group in mathematics is a set of elements and an operation star. And together, the set and the operation is denoted by this. That follows the following properties. Closure property, associative property, Existence of an identity element, existence of the inverse element. I am sure that these words are familiar to you. We had been exposed to this ever since grade school. You know, our teachers would write the properties of real numbers on the blackboard, and then we will copy it into our notebooks. And we had been doing this each year at the beginning of the year when our teachers would discuss the properties of the set of real numbers. And so that is telling you something. Okay, so the set of real numbers and the operation of addition or multiplication is an example of a group. Let us go back to the properties of a group. Closure property. I will write to you or, or I will show to you how it is written in math language. For every two elements A and B in G, A star B is in G. 
that is our definition and understanding of the closure property. If you have two elements from G and you applied our operation on those two elements, the result is also in G, then you will say that the operation is closed on that set. Again, since I called your attention to the notations, you know the parentheses here are not necessary. I put it there just to help improve the readability of the sentence. It's like you have to suggest to the reader where to pause. So we can remove the parenthesis and replace it simply by a comma. Associativity. Okay, so we spoke about this last time. For any three elements of G, this is true. So again, that symbol there, that means for all or every. Our understanding here is we will apply the operation first on AB and then we will apply the operation on, on the results of this and this. If this result is also equal to this, wherein we change the grouping of our operation, then we shall conclude that the operation is associative in this set G. The other two properties are the existence of an identity element. Okay, again, pay attention to how I read it. There is an element E in G. Okay, so that is our symbol for there is or there exists. So there is an, an identity element in G such that for any element of G or for any A in G, E star A is equal to A star E and that is equal to A. So something like this happens in the set of real numbers when we are working with addition. And you know that the identity element, identity element, in the set of real numbers for addition is zero. Why? Because any real number, okay, added to, added to zero, is equal to the real number itself. So this is telling you something. The set of real numbers under the operation of addition is an example of a group. The existence of the inverse element. So for all elements of G, or for any element of G, there is an A inverse in G. Okay, that is our symbol for the inverse element. You should not interpret this as you should not interpret this as 1 over A. Because this interpretation is true only when we are working on multiplication. For each element of G, there is an inverse element in G such that, okay, so this is our symbol for such that such that A star A inverse is equal to E. Something like this happens again in the set of real numbers under the operation of addition. So what is the inverse element for, let's say, for example, number 5 in the set of real numbers when you are working with addition? Well, the inverse element is negative 5 because 5 plus negative 5 is equal to the identity element for addition, which we know to be 0. Let us go back to the definition of a group. An operation which is also closed or which follows the closure property is what we call a binary operation. We spoke about binary operations many videos ago. So what that means is we can replace this by the word binary operation and we can just delete this property because by definition a binary operation is an operation that follows the closure property. So in other books, they define a group in this way. It is a set of elements and a binary operation star that follow the following properties. Associativity, existence of an identity element, existence of an inverse element.